Hello folks, my name is Matt, I'm from Voice Hacker and I wanted to do something a little bit different today. Usually I do quite short videos on different accents and you know videos on public speaking all that sort of thing but I wanted to do something today which was much longer form. We're basically going to roll through a lesson and in this lesson I'm going to cover some kind of basic stuff about RP, about the British accent. And if you've not heard of RP before, it's received pronunciation. If we were to, I don't know, Wikipedia it right now. Uh, received pronunciation, where are we? Um, it's the standard form of British English pronunciation based on educated speech in Southern England, widely accepted as a standard elsewhere. Eh, you can argue about definitions, but yeah, it's pretty much RP. And the thing we're going to use to do it is something that I've made, which is uh, at translator.mattpocock.com. And after this lesson, or even during this lesson, you can pause it and go go away and check it out. It's a, it's really cool. Ah, oh, it's really cool. I coded it because I wanted my students to be able to practice at home. And um, what it does is you can basically go. Let's say we look at any any BBC News article. This is awful news. Poor Bruce Forsyth. Um, let's just go down to the okay obituary. Bruce Forsyth. You can go to any BBC News article or any piece of text anywhere and you can right click and press copy and paste it into this box up here and if you press convert it will convert it into um, into the uh, basically into phonetics into something that you can analyze and you can actually look at the different sounds you need to work on because obviously an accent is composed of different sounds and when you um, when you learn a new accent you have to change the sounds that you speak in so for instance we're gonna start now and I'm gonna actually uh, the thing I'm gonna do is we're going along so I'm just gonna change this down here to show what sound we're focusing on so that if you want to skip ahead and look at actually sounds that matter to you then then you can do that but we're gonna look at the TH sound first and to do that what you can do is you can go up to here we know the TH is a consonant um, and it's up here, so let's click all TH sounds. And we don't mind about position, so we're just going to search in any position. So, and now what you'll notice is they all show up here. Whoa! And this is, uh, the crowd goes wild, and it, it took me so long to be able to do this. But, um, the TH sound, it's a really important one. Lots of accents get it wrong. Lots of accents do, like, a, instead of a THE or a THE sound, they do a T or a D sound. Um, and this one the it's really important to get the tongue position right so for instance if we do some reading here on the way he became one of the most recognizable entertainers in the business driven by what appeared to be inexhaustible energy he became synonymous with the plethora notice the tongue is moving to that position each time and if you take your finger and place it just here plethora or although, just down here, although, and their feet with the, you should feel that every time you hit that the, the tongue is coming forward and touching that th there. The, the, the. North London, father, both his parents, Bruce Forsyth, etc. Uh, the young Bruce, and you get the idea. Now, many people can turn this into an F sound or a V sound. So, for instance, on, on Forsyth, many people in London, let's say, might say Forsyth, Forsyth, and turn them both into Fs. Well, I mean, the first one's still an F, but... Um, so, actually, we want to make sure that we get that difference between them. The difference between the F and the TH is quite simple. It's that the on the TH, the tongue moves and touches teeth, Forsyth, whereas on the F, Forsyth, or flat, flat, roof, the lips are doing the work. You get that difference on a the and th, the tongue is doing the work, and th and v, the lips are doing the work down the bottom. The other sound that people get the th confused with, uh, if I just look at all the th sounds again, search, um, the other sound is the T or D sound. If you're a Spanish speaker or an Indian speaker, let's say, Indian speaker, uh, Indian speaking English, but you know the heavy Indian accent, 
um, you might say da da or even Irish let's say the young Bruce the young da 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 so instead of a T or a D we need to stretch that sound out a little bit and make it a the or a th. So the big difference there is that the t and d are plosives. You see they're under this plosive thing here. So for instance, if we look for all the t sounds, um, this one should be on direct, hosted, descendant, let's say. Um, on all of these sounds, the t is a hard, hard sound. It's a plosive. And a plosive means an explosion, whereas a th or a th it means something that's dragged out a lot more. Th and the. Th and the. There's that quality of being dragged out. And that's why it's called a fricative. It has friction on it. So beat the clock instead of beat the clock. Beat the clock. So see if you can get that right. Um, I just want to look at an old website of mine. Elocution Lessons London. Do I have some TH stuff up there? I hope I do. No, maybe I don't. No, wrong rabbit hole. That's stupid. Um, so, yeah, that's the first sound then, the TH sound. Let's move on, and what's the next sound I want to do? Ah, yeah, the S and the Z sound. If I just change this up here, S and Z sounds. Now, the S and the Z are kind of funny, really. If we... um. This, this is a very common... Let's move on to a new thing. This is something about Steve Bannon. Um, if, we, uh, if we search for the S and the Z sounds, you notice there's actually a lot more Zs than we realize. Many people who, uh, who learn English and sort of don't um, look into the phonetics of it, they don't realize how many Zs there are. So, for instance, on Wednesday, his candid interview was weather magazine, etc. There's loads of these bloody things. Um, presidential advisor. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. And a lot of them are written as S's. So this is of course where this translator comes into play because you can actually find out which ones are which. And we come to a kind of difference between um, between lots of different sounds, which is that some sounds are what's called unvoiced and some sounds are voiced. So here what that means is basically the S, 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 as you can sort of feel if you take your finger and place it on your larynx, s, 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 you'll be able to feel that the S actually doesn't use any vibration here. S, s, s. You can do it without any vibration whatsoever. Uh, whereas the Z, 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 it actually has a lot of vibration. Z, Z. So when you say, for instance, was, was. And by the way, this is a really cool thing on this thing as well. If you ever want to hear the sound, you can just click it. Z. Here we go. Z. Perfect. His. Z. A magazine. Z. Whereas dismissal. Z. It's much more of an S. So that Z was weather. Was weather. Notice that Z Z Z Z Z Z, Z is really voiced there. Um. Uh, other, so that's that's basically a big thing. Watch out for the difference between S sounds and Z sounds, because some accents can de-voice these Z sounds. For instance, if we look at Z sounds just on the ends, so for instance, his candid interview can, uh, for instance, in German accent, turn into a, a his candid his candid interview, his candid interview, as a senior presidential advisor remains his series. Um, and that can be a sort of um, Prussian German or Scandinavian thing to do. So yeah, basically watch out for that. Make sure those Zs are staying as Zs. But if we head to the S for a little while, so house, for instance, or groups, let's say supremacists. Don't know why the first one isn't. S isn't. Oh, it's at, it's at the end. Fair play. Uh, let me change that up. Um, opponents. Um, so here then. Uh, this is a sound that a lot of people lisp on, and what I mean by lisp is lisp is a horrible word because it it makes it sounds like you're getting the sound wrong and it's awful and you've got a problem and yes I've lived all my life with a lisp how terrible, um, and a lot of people can be really affected by lisps and what it is it's basically just an inaccuracy on one sound, 
and what that might be is uh, Donald Trump in a either series series of tweets if I pull up the Z sounds as well bashed his Republican opponents in a Confederate Civil War monument like that or it could be the kind of Sean Connery version which is uh, Donald Trump in a series of tweets uh, bashed his Republican opponents Civil War monument the cause of which uh, white supremacists etc you notice that those S sounds there are turning into SH sounds so it's all about getting that a bit more located and you can check out another video on my channel the sibilant S video which is quite a popular one um, just to see if you can get that a bit more centered but other than that it's a fairly simple sound other than that unvoiced and voiced difference so next up what have we got next we've got the F and V sounds um, I'm just gonna put this as the V sounds actually because the V sounds are sort of um, something all to themselves right they're, they're a kind of crazy thing now when we say V um, the first thing, so yeah, okay, we got one on any position. That's good. Talk of Washington. You notice the of here is is um, yeah, it's it's not one you expect because obviously there's a difference between of and off, which is kind of quite obvious when you hear it. But I know I'm 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 going off down a massive rabbit hole. What I mean to say is the difference between the F and the V. Is that the v, 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 v is again voiced? So if we were to bring up the F's, um, co-founder, founder, you can feel that when you do the F there, founder, it's unvoiced. Whereas the V's, interview, advisor, civil war, every day, etc., you can feel that as you do them, you are kind of using voice to create the sound. The the big one that people get the V okay there's two big confusions with the V let's do the Spanish confusion confusion first the Spanish confusion is the difference between V and B there's very little difference in the Spanish language between these two sounds they both turn into uh, the longer they talk about about Mr. Lannan about racism every day every day it turns into a sort of very lippy sound and so often with Spanish students I'm getting them to separate the B's and the V's so the B's are plosives, they're very strong, very powerful, very hit ba, ba, ba. whereas the V's are again this fricative feeling v, v, v. every day debate about acceptability of white nationalism a gentle way of describing the racists so this is a really key one for people who struggle with this Bannon may be out of favor but not his ideology see if you can um, yeah get the real difference between those plosives bah, 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 and the fricatives va, va, va. I'm just gonna have a bit of water mm -mm -mm. Um, next the V sounds can often get confused with another one which is uh, bring up the V's again and we're going to bring up the W's right here at the bottom in approximants um, and here this this is can be a very Russian thing it can be an Eastern European thing it can be an Indian thing as well I mean Indian subcontinent accents so here we can get the difference between while the survey can be while the survey survey was a bit or was a bit loaded and this can also be a German thing as well. I'm sorry for my terrible accents here, but I'm sort of dipping in and out of them. Overwhelming can be particularly tricky. There's one at the bottom here. Overwhelming. White supremacists. Liberals will point out. Whoa, 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 of. And so make sure the big difference here is that the V, va, 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 you can feel it sort of happening inside the mouth. Va, va, va. The lip is sort of... Um, coming up towards the top teeth there va 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 whereas the wa 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 it happens outside the mouth the lips come forward wa 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 va 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 that is all well and good will welcome why the fuss over confederate statues protect a way of life under attack tweet it would be very easy to say tweet there tweet uh, with, of, over, 
with make sure that these purple ones are outside the mouth and the V's are inside the mouth. Cool! Very good, very good, very good. Um, okay. So we've got the the V sound. Let's look at the H sound. The H. H, H, H. Ha, ha, ha. Now this H. Uh, where's my thing? Here it is. Um, H sounds. This H is funny because it can go, um, it can go wrong in two ways. Let's say that you have, oh yeah, where are my H's? Where are my H's at? Where are my H's at? Here we go. Um, so we've got this who, who just here, ha, 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 who. Um, it can go wrong in one of two ways. Either you can put it in a place where it's not supposed to be, or you can totally leave it off. Um, let's say we're doing a sort of Cockney accent, um, or you come from London and you um, sometimes drop off your H's, and you turn it into Ku Klux Klaners who, who marched. Historical symbols. Why else? You notice that you're dropping the H off there. So, for instance, French speakers will do this. Um, people who come from countries who were um, occupied by colonial France, um, for instance, uh, in large parts of West Africa, will also drop off these H's as well, and, and quite a few African accents will do it too. Um, uh, although most of my African experience is with Nigeria as, a, as an accent, but uh, so I wouldn't want to make massive sweeping generalizations. Um, let's actually zoom to a different article here. Um, where are we? The H, 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 H. Um, so yeah, make sure that if you're if you're dropping them off, so if you're going, is top economic policy advisor, take a hand, place it in front of your mouth, and go, ha, huh, ha, huh. almost as though you're kind of uh, misting up a mirror in front of you. Ha, huh. his top economic policy advisor, who also worked on Wall Street, um, whose campaign, hallmark, his tenure, etc., you notice that each time you do it, you're creating a puff of air that comes out of the mouth. Hallmark of his tenure had been allies. And that's really crucial. It's just that ha, 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 little puff of air. The other way it can go wrong is when you make it way too big. So when you go, um, whose campaign was a hallmark, his tenure had been ha, ha, ha. And this one, the ha sound, it sort of ricochets around in the back of the mouth. Ha, ha, ha. And here you're using a sort of the uvula trill to do it. You're making it very sort of ha, ha, ha. Very, um, yeah, it's, it's trilled. It's sort of vibrating in a strange place in the back of the mouth, which we don't really want. We don't want the sound to be ha, ha, ha in there. We just want it very clean. So if you're making that sound, that ha, 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 bring it down to something that's just a bit more clean, a bit more just pure air. So when we say, ha, 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 that's the one that we want. It's just not, it's not ha, 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 keep it clean, ha, 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 not whose, but whose. Nice, easy. Now we come to our last bit of the fricatives here. We have the sh and the j sound. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of phonetics here to describe this one, I think. Um, it's our first bit of phonetics. Nice. Sh and j sounds. Um, so these two sounds, these are basically the, well, as you'll see here, they're the words in show. So kushna, for instance, transition, bush, administration, official, and also the j sound, which is much rarer as well. I wonder if there's any in this whole thing. Ooh, any purple, any purple, any purple? Here we go. Occasional. Can hear it there. This sound, it's um, I think the main thing I hear with this sound is sometimes, especially on the sh, so Charlottesville Nationalist Rally, um, I sometimes hear um, either it being misplaced, so either it going sort of turning into a going a little bit too far back, um, and if you feel that in yourself, if you say Charlottesville or Nationalist Rally. Just make sure the sound is focused towards slightly further forward, slightly further towards the front of the mouth. Charlottesville, 
Charlottesville. It's very easy to say Charlottesville, Charlottesville. Mm. But that sh sound is really what we want. Nationalist rally. Um, do dovish, dovish side emerges. Um, <clears throat> so that sh sound. What was the other thing I hear about it? Oh yeah, I sometimes hear it confused with. If I go back to this, go back to the sh, and go back to the ch sound, I sometimes hear it confused with that ch. So wherever. Any purples? Here we go. So, like some accents will say officials, officials, or even slightly differently, they'll mix up the ch with the sh. So they go changing, changing, collection, wish, departure, chief of staff. This can happen in Southeast Asian accents, for instance. Chief, um, uh, ruptured, ruptured it should be ruptured. So I think if you're having trouble with the sh, see, try comparing it to the ch, and because the ch should feel harder, as we'll get to in a minute, in fact, yeah, we'll get to in a minute, the ch is a much harder sound, much more piercing, ch, ch, ch. The ch is called an affricate, which is just up here, it's in the affricate section along with j. And that ch, 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 it's got to make sure it's really nice and tight, and it's not sort of getting just fricative eyes, so um, official, nice and loose here, and ruptured, much stronger. Good. Um, so that's our sh, and that's our je. I think with the je, I mean, you've got to make sure it's, um, there's, I mean, there's going to be hardly any here. What was the one we found before? Occasional. Equation. There you go, that's another one. You've got to make sure it doesn't um, get confused with the je as well in the same token. These are so rare. Changing. There you go, that's a tricky one. You've got the ch and the je right next to each other. Um, John F. Kelly, General, General McMaster, July, Jared Kushner. Um, you just got to make sure they're not going General, um, July, Jared, all that, all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, just make sure those um, sh and j, sh and j sounds a lot, even I'm confusing them now. Make sure they just stay as they are, sh and j. Next, we go on to the P and B sounds. And I think, um, where's my brain? Here we go, P and B. P and B sounds. As we talk, talked about before, the the B sound can sometimes get confused with the V sound. And that's the that's the kind of biggest thing about these sounds. They're nothing sort of super special. Um, just to kind of cover them briefly, the P, P, P. You notice that when you say P, P, P like that, the lips sort of make a they sort of come together and they create a little explosion. This is our first plosive of the day. Yay, plosive. Um, uh, when we make a p and b, those lips are just sort of coming forward and air pressure builds behind them and they explode. You'll notice with the b, 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 it's the voiced version, and the p, 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 it's the unvoiced version. And there are lots of these as well, if I remember correctly. If we go to a pa pa pa, like in pi, predecessor, spring, campaign, process, trump, ruptured, top, policy, etc. Um, and B, ba 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 ba, bush, both, being, by, bean, but, bannon, 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 bean, etc. Um, I think the big the big thing here, with the B, obviously we've covered it with the, the V sounds. Go back to the V section if you want to look at that again. Um, but the P sound, some accents will tend to over voice this. They will tend to turn their P's into B's. So you'll tend to hear predecessor, predecessor, but ba, ba predecessor, campaign. Um, you'll tend to hear departure, but ba, 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 departure. So you just got to make sure you keep it as an unvoiced sound. And again, you can use your hand in front of your mouth, pa, 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 departure, departure, instead of departure. It's a very subtle difference, but you, you really do pick up on it when you notice it. Um, good, very good, very good. Okay, next one. Next one's a big one, actually. This next one is the T and the D sounds. Um, let me change over my thing. T and D sounds. T and D sounds. Nice. As I do, well, as I carry on this video, you'll probably just notice I get madder. Mad is good, isn't it? It's good. Mad good. Yeah, hopefully mad's good. Um, 
Well, okay, T and D sounds. With these T and D sounds, they're kind of tricky because they can vary they very easily get influenced by other sounds. What I mean by this is um, it kind of de- first of all, the way you say them depends on where they are in the word. So here it's going to be very useful to search for things at the end here. Let's search for T's and let's just hmm, now let me go back a bit. The T's and D's first of all the thing you've got to know is that they're very easy to confuse. Some accents will confuse them very easy with a sort of TH type sound. So when you say talking about talking about you notice that that those words talking about it's very easy for it to go to talking about talking about and for them to turn almost like a a sort of very light TH sound which is tricky because we don't want that. We want them to remain quite t, 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 and we want them to remain just behind the teeth. You notice when you make that sound t, 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 like that, and lots of accents do that by the way, the t, t, t thing. So Italian will do it, Spanish will do it, Indian will do it, Indian will do it, um, Russian will do it, uh, Russian does everything, um, uh, Latin American will do it, everywhere will do it. So that Da, da, talking about da. you just want to bring it slightly behind the teeth t, 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 so that the sound is actually going onto the alveolar ridge instead of this t, 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 here and just so we know where the alveolar ridge is alveolar ridge alveolar ridge where is it yeah here it's good um i like this little image it's really nice um what we're looking at here is that alveolar ridge is just on about that number four or five area. If you run run your tongue back uh, and just find it there, t, 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 t. it's not quite a t, 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 because ah, I really need to get that, get to that in a minute. Often Indian accents they won't make it like a da 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 at the front. They will actually pull it further back so that it's almost hitting like about six or seven. This T and D. So, for instance, when we go back to here, um, played down, played down, played down, dismissal, followed, right, da, 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 da. They will make that T really far back. So, we want to, if you want to get that accent perfect, you want to push it further forward. So, it's more, instead of it being on a 6 or a 7, it's more like on a 3 or a 4 or a 5. T, 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 t. Now, the accents that pull it too far forward, the ta, ta, ta accents, they're almost landing towards a 2. Da, da, da. And we don't want that. We want them just at the right area, just behind the teeth, on about four. Um, does that make sense? We're we're on a sort of bit of a tangent here, but that ta 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 placement is really crucial. So when you do it, um, an- another good way to check it is just take a hand and go ta ta ta. For me, you should feel a small expulsion of air there. And the same is true for the d d d sound. D d d t t t d d d. Good, very good. Um, I was going to mention about endings here, because often, um, let's say we go for a, a d at the end. Sometimes the British accent, if you're being kind of chilled out about it, oh no, oh, I press the wrong button, no. <laughs> Um, sometimes, if you're being chilled out, you will drop some of the T's at the ends of your words. So you might say, in it, Mr. Bannon mockingly played down, in it, Mr. Bannon, threat to North Korea, part of the equation, part of the equation. Especially if you're talking quickly, you'll tend to drop those off. But we tend to never drop the D's at the ends of our words. Follow. For instance, we wouldn't say follow an August. Nah, we'd say followed an August. Initiated with a, a writer. We wouldn't say initiated with a writer whom he, whom he had never spoken. That's a funny one. We'll get to that later. Played down. Here, because there's two Ds in a row, we sort of miss one. But in general, the D is kind of sacred. We want to hold on to that D as long as we can. And lots of accents will drop it off. So make sure you're hitting that D at the ends of your words. The T can be a little bit looser, but the D is so crude. Do not drop that D. Is that rude? Is that rude? I feel like that's rude. 
No, dropping the D is fine. It's uh, another verb. And then that letter. Oh my god. I told you I was going mad. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, what's next for us? We've got the cut and the go. Okay, cut and the go is good. Um, let me change my text a little bit. Cut and g science. I'm just fluidly moving between terrible accents. Um, okay, so cut and g sounds. Uh, let's go to a different one. Um, let's go for g g g g g. So, for instance, guy here gained, and the k sounds. Yeah, much more common. The k sounds are way more common here. Uh, figure, arguing, active. Um, let's go back to where all those k sounds are. Capacity, claims, affected, current, quickly, traction, etc. So, um, the k sounds are quite hard to get wrong in my experience. Um, I don't know many accents who struggle with them. It's a very commonly used sound. The g sound again for um, for Spanish or Latin accents tends to be um, tends to can be a little bit light. So it can be a rain traction, rain, rain, instead of a pure g sound. So it tends to get sort of fricativized. It tends to get slurry. So that's just one to watch, I think, basically. Making sure it stays hard and fast. G, 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 a plosive, an explosive sound, instead of a rain traction. If we look for the yellows here, we've got... Oh, there's like no yellows. Ah, here we go. Figure, arguing, puts a target. Um, targets. Come on. Government, guard. Example. That's a funny one. Example. It's a little g, z g. sound. G, z. Example. Significantly. Gave. Just make sure they're nice and firm and strong. And I'm not sure about the K sounds. I don't think there's anything crazy about them. I think, um, yeah. If you if you have any trick, if you have any difficulties with them, comment below and I'll put up another video about them. Mm. But okay, we are out of plosive city. Woo! We are done with the plosives, man. What's up next? We have the, uh, oh yeah, the Africans. In fact, we've talked about these before. I don't know whether we need to go into them again. Um, I'll just, I'll just uh, in case people are, are looking for them, I'll just put them up there. Chet and just sounds. Um, yeah, they're pretty easy. They're pretty easy. I mean, as long as you get them right, they're very, um, they're very uh, distinctive sounds. And it's just a case of getting them pushing them in the right place, transgender, or transgender, I should say, the j j j just there, individuals, uh, yeah, sometimes you'll hear accents that will get individuals, for instance, but just make sure you're hitting those j sounds. Um, one that's really weird is, in fact, if I open up a, um, if I go onto this website, this is ipa.typeit.org, it's a very useful site, I use it all the time, um, and if I just tour, if I just throw in a couple of words here, if I throw in try, dry, strength, uh, tra, tra, can't think of words, um, dream, all of these words here, you notice that many accents will say them as try, try, dry, strength, trove, dream, but actually, and what they're doing there is they're separating the d from the r, and sometimes they flip the r over and do a tapped r, 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 or tr, tr, tr. But actually, um, we turn these into try, dry, strength, crazily, uh, trove, and dream. So we're actually throwing in these ch and dr sounds, kind of where you don't expect them. So try, dry, strength, trove, dream. And can you think of, and this is basically when a T and an R come together, or a D and an R comes together. So again, control, uh, drunk, um, redress. So like redress the balance. Um, so yeah, so it's when, whenever these sounds come together. And feel free to comment below with more words that you can think of for these ch and j sounds. 
but good job. I mean, other than that, they're they're fairly straight down the line. If you want to, you can look at the sh and j bit earlier. But um, yeah, they're pretty pretty simple sounds. Um, next up, we go to the nasals. We're on the mmm sounds. Mmm, 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 mmm sounds. So mmm sounds. Let's put nasals in there. Nasals, nasals. Okay, nasals are kind of like pretty simple too. Um, some accents are not used to putting sounds through the nose, and because the nasals are all nasal sounds. With the nasal sounds, you shut your mouth in one way or another, and you just basically put the sound through the nose. So, when we go from, mm, with the M, we're using the lips to create it. Mm, 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 mm. And all the sound is coming through the nose. When you make the M, the, the tongue is totally relaxed. Mm, mm. And you should feel the vibrations just behind the lips. Whom he had never spoken. Mr. Bannon. And... So that kind of mmm, that vibration just behind the lips, is kind of important because some accents. Um, oh, it's a, oh, it's only at the end. Oh, it's only at the end. Should be everywhere. Um, there we go. There's loads more. Now. American. Um, some accents actually drop the m off the ends of their words. They will tend to say whom he had never spoken from. Or oh, sorry, they will say who he had never spoken from conventional weapons. Um, I don't know why it's, uh, oh yeah, it's... That's weird. I don't know why it's doing all the misters. Um, got any more? Got any more? Got any more? Got any more? Son. Son. From. Him. So whereas they should be saying some. From. Him. The the accents I'm thinking of when I describe this, um, the Chinese accent or... And I, I imagine a lot of East Asian accents as well. I've heard it in the Korean accent too. Um, lots of these accents, they um, they drop off the M's. I don't know why. British people don't tend to drop off the M's. We tend to keep them really um, stable. It's one of the, it's one of our sacred sounds. And so, if you're having trouble with that, or you might not even have noticed, if you're Spanish, if you um, if your language is derived from Spanish, um, or you are um, uh, you have a Chinese accent or a Japanese accent, let's say. Check out those M's. You might be surprised. Um, next up, let's do the N sound. N n n n n n n n n n n n n The N sound. N n n n. See, I'm going mad. Um, the N sound here is uh, again. It's just a nasal. Just the nasal. It's just a uh, instead of your lips this time. You should just put your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you should feel that the vibration happens just between where your tongue touches the roof of your mouth there. Mm -hmm. And again, um, this one is not so not so common with Spanish accents to drop it, but I often hear it in uh, East Asian accents to drop it on the ends of words. So to me, me, person, on. Resignation, I'm resting, yeah, etc. So make sure you're just hitting all of those ends, basically, and you're using, um, you're allowing the sound to come through the nose. By the way, a good test. If you ever uh, think you're being nasal or you have a nasal tone, loads of people think they they have a nasal voice, but they they don't. Often they don't. Um, if you take a finger, place it on your nose like this, and go, mmm, 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 like that. You can feel the mmm mm, sound. It's just very sort of um, uh, when you're being nasal, your finger will vibrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're not being nasal, if you say e e, your finger will not vibrate. So if you have trouble with these m's or n's or mm sounds, the one we'll get to in a minute, then just check, make sure the sound is coming through your nose. Mm. So let's go on to that last one of the nasals, which is the l mm sounds. And this one is a very common one to get wrong in various ways. Um, the most obvious one is when um, you drop. Oh yeah, let me let me change my title here. The most obvious one is where you drop it off completely. Um, endings. Yeah, is where you drop it off completely. So, for instance, especially when it's at the end. Uh, money, money, money. 
This tends to be, again be an East Asian thing, we tend to just get a lot of nasals lost in the East, East Asian accent. And, uh, East Asian accent, what a massive generalization where most of the world's people come from. Um, but th at least that's what I've heard in my limited experience in teaching um, Asian clients, uh, Chinese clients, Korean clients, Japanese clients, etc. Um, is that that own sound tends to get dropped off. But there's also many accents that will tend to say more nin, n, n, n. They will replace the n sound with an n sound. And this happens in uh, London, happens in uh, West Country, where I'm from, um, happens in, oh, I don't know, bloody loads of places. Ireland, um, uh, Scotland, I imagine, in certain places. Just happens everywhere. Um, it's a kind of fact of life when you're dealing with these NG endings, when people ask you to, uh, yeah, I want to be able to speak better, or I want to make sure I, I say morning instead of morning. And a lot of people know they get it wrong, and it's a very small thing to correct. And it just takes a little bit of practice. And so let's just say these words. Uh, the big difference between the two is that if, if we go back to our um, our little image here, um, the n, 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 n sound in no and sun, it's... Um, it touches here at four and five, na 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 na. Whereas the uh sound, it actually touches right at the back. So when the uh fourteen is coming up to nine, sorry, I just need a bit of water. Ah. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Speaking for a while. Um, <clears throat> here, um, number fourteen comes up to number nine. So it comes up and they touch, Ooh. and you can feel it sort of touching and working in the back there. And um, and with that sort of touch, it sends the sound up through the back of the nasal passages. So it goes, Ooh. and this little soft palate thing there, it just sort of closes over, touching the tongue, and the sound comes through the nose. And that's how you make it. Um, and a lot of people just sort of say, oh yeah, all I say, I say the G. But actually, you don't say the G. You don't go morning. And many accents do do that. So they will tend to say, as a Friday morning. Um, mm, that was a bit... As a Friday morning. Yeah, that's the Manchester. Discussing, parting of the ways. West Wing. And you notice there that they're almost saying an extra G there. Extra G sound. Right wing, right wing, right wing, and wing advisors, reading, whereas here we just want to just smoothly come off it, continue reading, nursing, condemning, rebuking, blah blah blah, blah pushing, um, leaving, etc. Now, all of these ng sounds, they're just absolutely the same, just make sure you hit that tongue up at the back of the mouth and keep it smooth, 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 smooth like butter, smooth like... What else is smooth? Plasticine. Is plasticine smooth? Hmm. Hmm. Well done for everyone who's made it this far, by the way, who's got to the point where I'm saying plasticine is smooth. I don't know whether it's smooth. So, we've done the nasals. Um, I'm debating leaving these for another day, for another video, but since we're here, why not? We need to talk about the L sound. The L is freaking massive because we need to um, divide it up into two separate sounds. Uh, light L and dark L. And you're like, what? There's two different L's? What the hell? That's crazy, dude. But actually there are. Now, if you are coming to if you're coming to us from America, let's say, then you only have one type of L. You have the L that you do whenever you see an L. Um, so, in fact, in fact, I've got an all L's button. Why not do that? L. Charlottesville. Wait, is that all L's? No, that's not all L's. Is it? No, oh, maybe it's all the L's. Um, is it? So, light L, so much. Oh, it's at the end. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, so, yeah, if you're coming to us from the States, then you will tend to, tend to say newsletter, newsletter, email delivered, and every single L will be nice and dark here, it would be a very strong dark sound, occasional, policy, special, uh, followed, publication, played down, solves, million, military, soul, 
military solution here. They got us. Right? And many dialects in the U.S. make that L sound. I'm using the general American um, uh, sort of blueprint to, to talk about American accents, by the way. So, of course, not all Americans speak this way, but um, but general American, the accent does. Um, but things get a bit more tricky when we get to the British folk. Because when we go British, what we're sort of talking about is um, there's actually a division between the owls. Some of the owls are light, and some of the owls are dark. So here the dark owls are going to be purple, and the light owls are going to be um, uh, are going to be yellow. When we say pledges, or in fact league is much better, la 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 league. Um, you can notice that when you say that L in the British way, league, the L is just sort of touching forward at the front of the mouth there, la la la. Whereas on the purple ones, email, we're actually doing the same as the Americans do. Americans pronounce email exactly the same as British, email. Cool. Um, and many accents will find themselves in sort of wrong places on this spectrum. So many will find themselves doing all yellows, doing all, um, oh, this one. I don't know why it's a million uh. here, that's weird. Um, they will find themselves doing email, email. So for instance, there's a very Welsh accent, email. Italian tend to do this as well. Loads of accents do it. And some accents will do it all dark. Eastern European, for instance, Charlotte, Charlottesville, Charlotte's will, probably. Um, Pledge is Anti-Defamation League. Led by rarely leaving. You get the idea. It's very, um, they will tend to make those L's very dark. So it's all about separating out the differences. Um, even some British accents, by the way, they'll be absolutely fine with the yellow ones. They'll go Charlottesville, but they will say, um, oh no, they will say Charlottesville. Ville is a big Cockney thing to do. Called, so called nationalists. Uh, email. Email address. Occasional. Special. Dismissal. You get the idea. In other words, they will tend to just drop the dark L altogether and just say the light L, basically. So, we've all got something to learn about the dark L's and light L's, because many accents just mess them up. So, it's crucial to work out where you are on that spectrum. And I think I've got a couple of videos. I've got a video on the dark L, definitely. Um, but cool. That's the L's for now. Next up, we've got another big sound, I imagine, which is the R sound. R and this is another big one. Again, if you're an American, you will tend to say every single R. Oh, I need to do my title. <gasps> title, 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 title. Oh my god. Um, R sounds. Um, how's the lighting in here? We good? Yeah, we good. Oh, dear, dear. Um, so if you're an American, you will tend to say every single R that you see. You will tend to say, um, rider, Korea. In fact, if I just do um, these ones too. Um, whoa, what? No, 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 no. That's not right. Oh, no, no. No, yeah, we're right. Okay, yeah, it's just been weird. It's just been weird. Sorry. Um, oh, it's been weird. I need to fix this. Um, okay, so what it's what it's actually doing is in... Um, yeah. Ah! Okay. Apologies. Everything appears to be falling apart, but I'm still here, and I hope you still are too. Um... Basically, in the British accent, we say some R's and drop some others. I think I need to do some coding on this to fix it properly. But for now, what we're going to do is do it here. With the R sounds, um, in, let's say we take the word uh, roll. If we have an American accent, they will say roll, roll. And in the British accent, we will say roll, roll. So we say this word exactly the same. But let's say we take the word car, car. Now, in American accent, you will say car, car. Whereas in the British accent, you will say car. What's the difference? The British accent drops the R. So it dropped R's, car, car. So same is true on farm, 
fear, fair, uh, for, um, uh, I can't think of any more, for, um, and basically there is a, there's a rule with this, and it's quite a simple rule, um, it's a rule that my program is not understanding for now apparently, but basically in American accents, so American, say every R U C. Say them all. Love them. Love R's. They're the best. And this is a rotic accent. So other rotic accents, in, um, for instance, Irish is a rotic accent. Um, what other accents are there? Uh, West Country British is a um, is a rotic accent. Um, so my mind. Uh, I think I think Russian is a rotic accent. Um, many parts of Eastern Europe will be rotic accents as well. Non-rotic accents, though. So non-rotic, so British accents drop some R's. They drop them. And so, for instance, we have um, they will tend to drop R's that are followed by consonants. So, for instance, if we take the word card here, card, they tend to drop that R. In fact, they always drop that R. So any time you have an R that's followed by a consonant, in the British accent, you don't say it. So weird as well. Um, girl. Um, and also, they drop R's that are followed by nothing. In other words, um, R's at the ends of words. So for instance, uh, poor. Uh, lieu, um, cure, uh, sir. All of these R's are dropped. So the only R's that you say in a British accent are the ones that are followed by vowels. So, um, uh, for, 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 and of course this is vowel sounds. Here they're not actually followed by a vowel sound, they're just followed by a written one. Whereas here in real, in control, in rock, in sarong, yeah, I told you I was getting weird, um, broken, etc. All of them, all of the R sounds are in there. Um, so, that's how I think the key then between these two sounds, between the, um, the certainly the American and the British, and I encourage you to work out which accent you fall into, whether you say every single R that you see, or whether you drop some. Because if you want to do a British accent, you should be dropping some. Now, that's not everything about the R. Let's go to, on to a different here, Nicholas Sturgeon. Um, because some people actually get the pronunciation of the R itself a little bit wrong. So, for instance, um, people might say problematic, pra pra pra. They will tend to tap that R instead of doing what you should do, which is to kind of uh, what is the correct description? to pull it problematic during um, party is one that we drop wrongly from across destructive very we're sort of pulling that R and we're, we're doing something like this which is if you take your finger and place it on your lips like this and go shh and as you do that go r r you should feel that the tongue is sort of pulling back. It's not necessarily touching anything. It's not touching anything like on the alveolar ridge or anything like that. It's just kind of pulling back into a bit of space there. R, r, r. Very real. Right. And that's a confusing thing to sort of get right after a while because you feel like it should go somewhere. But actually, the R just pulls back into an area. It doesn't touch, it doesn't go r, 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 just r. And this is a tricky one. I'm sure I've got a video on this somewhere. But it's a bloody nightmare sound to get right. So good luck. Um, the last, we're in the last stretch. Final little stretch. We've got two sounds to go. We've got the, what was it? Y yeah sound. And this one is actually called, um, it's got its own name. It's Weirdly, it's called the yod. Um, and it's in lots of words that you wouldn't usually expect this this little yod. It's in gene. Wait, it's not in that word. Genial. Oh, genial. There you go. 
genial. It's a y sound just there. A simpler one is huge. It's like the difference between huge and huge. It's that little y in there. It's the difference between music and music. Now I'm going to look through these quite rapidly because I want to make some um, points about this. Yeah, this is a good one, I think. Uh, you're pretty good. You're not that great. Um, nah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, the one I'm thinking of is many of my students would say um, schedule. 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 In other words, they wouldn't put that y where it's supposed to be. Schedule. Whereas it needs to be schedule. Schedule. Um, population. Um, accurate instead of accurate. Accurate. Uh, no, we don't want the R's. We want the U sounds, wherever they are. U, 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 U. Um, so, interview. Million. And feud instead of food, of course. So, it's a sound that's um, fairly easy to get right. I think it's not a tremendously complicated sound. It's almost like a semi vowel here. It's just a ya, ya, ya. But the crucial thing to get right about it is that it's all about the movement of the tongue here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you can get that tongue movement right, you've basically got the sound right. Um, okay. We kind of um I kind of morphed this thing because I'm uh it's quite late here, I'm actually getting quite tired. Um I've kind of morphed it into a just the consonants video. And we've done pretty well because we've actually um, covered every single consonant apart from this last one, the w sound. So here we have were to blame for the violence that erupted at a white nationalist rally, leaving one woman dead. And frankly, the only thing that I've really heard go wrong with this sound is that when it comes to um, uh, is when it gets confused with the v. Many accents have this sound. Many languages have this sound, and it's not one that. Um, that is particularly tricky, but I'd say that go back to the v sound, which is I think way earlier, um, and just see what you, um, yeah, let's see what I said there, because basically I think the thing that's important about this sound is that it happens outside of the mouth. So a white nationalist rally leaving one woman dead, working west wing, white, etc. Um, cool. Cool. Are we done? We're freaking done, man. We've gone through every single consonant. Whoa. Wow. That was that wasn't too bad. That was pretty good. Alright. Well let me just um put my email address up here because basically if you've got any issues with um with any of these sounds whatsoever, then you can come and get lessons with me. I look exactly like this. I wear exactly this headset. I um we use exactly this bit of software and a couple of other bits that I've got as well. Um, I also have an app that you can download too, um, which is just for Android, unfortunately. But where is it? Voice Hacker Accents or something. Here it is. Um, it's very good it, and it helps teach you basically all of these things. Oh, we've got four five star reviews. Hey. Um, yeah, it just helps teach you all of these things. It's got loads of descriptions like. Um, uh, like all of basically all the stuff I've said today, and it also gives you loads of practice words as well with me reading out the sounds and stuff. Um, four five star reviews, yeah boy, nearly up to a thousand installs. Oh, kicking it down the park, out of the park, smacking it out of the park, hitting it out of the park, doing something with it and the park. Um, but otherwise, I've been Matt at VoiceHacker.co.uk. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you've uh, got a lot out of this video. Uh, if we get good feedback from this, then I'll definitely be back to do some more work on vowels. Because the vowels, I think, are the, are the trickiest ones, and they're often where this, especially this translator, can get a lot out of it, where um, where you might be struggling otherwise. Um, but yeah, oh, I feel sad to say goodbye, but I suppose I have to. I need to go eat some dinner. It's, I'm, I'm, so I'm in, let me give you a bit of backstory. I'm in London right now. I live in uh, North London at the moment. And I am, yeah, it's about 8 o'clock, 8.07 8 here. Um, and I basically just finished with my last lesson. And I thought, oh, okay, why not actually do something really big? 
and do the whole bloody thing. And we have. Um, yeah, I don't want to say goodbye now, but I should. I'm going to probably just go out and buy a pizza. Sounds good.